Lord, and give him a little glory right now. Hallelujah. Stand for the reading of God's Word. Palm Coast and NSB, you're in the house. Let's give two of our eight campuses a great big God bless you for joining us live. Who's ready to walk into the year of the yes with me? Have you already started? That's what I declared, and I really believe it's manifesting before our eyes. Remember, 2 Corinthians tells us that the promises of God are in Jesus Christ. Somebody say yes and amen. Hallelujah. So we're connecting our yes with the yes of God. I'm coming to you today from Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to begin reading here at verse 2. I've only got one text at the beginning here that I want to share with you. The Bible says here, you have been snared by the words of your mouth, trapped in parentheses and tied up by the words that you speak. I'm going to say that again because you don't need it, but your neighbor really needs it. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, push him and say he's talking to you. Some of y'all need to snap your finger and jerk your neck because you know. But it says here, you have been snared by the words of your mouth, trapped and tied up by the words that you speak. Have you ever gotten tongue-tied? Have you ever been trying to say something and you just can't seem to get it out? Let me tell you, when you do what I do, it's a terrible thing to get tongue-tied. And some of y'all have come to Calvary long enough that you've seen me really get tongue-tied in years gone by. But I'm going to preach for a few minutes along these lines, not tongue-tied, tongue-untied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to untie your tongue and get faith, hope, victory, joy, peace, and power? I declare this year you're not going to be trapped and tied up by the words in your mouth, but your tongue will be untied in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Who wants to get your tongue and your mouth in covenant with the Lord and in connection with him? Man, I feel like preaching. All right, slip up your hands here in Sacred Season. You at Palm Coast, love you so much, everybody. Love you in the NSB. Love you online. You honor us by being here today. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we will not be trapped or tied up by the words that we speak. But God, our life will be untied this year because we will speak words of faith. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you're ready to learn, give the Lord the ovation of the morning. Okay, precious. All of you can sit down at every campus, tongue untied. I am declaring in faith that you're not going to be trapped this year by the words of your mouth, but the words of your mouth are going to bring life and hope and victory into your life. So I speak this declaration of faith over you that in 2022, as you untie your tongue, you will tie down your purpose. Come on, who's ready to tie down your purpose? Okay, do I have anybody over here that's ready to tie down your purpose? Anybody in the back, if you're ready to tie down your purpose, open up your mouth and give God a praise right now. Come on. I've talked to you a lot through the years about Hebrew letters and numbers and what they represent. Remember, I've told you that God speaks in a lot of different ways. He speaks through his word. He speaks through time. He speaks through season. He speaks through his prophets. I mean, God is always speaking. But one of the things that God uses in a great way in the Bible are numbers. Because study your Bible and you'll find out that numbers mean something. And I want to talk to you today about the Hebrew letters and numbers just for a moment because every Hebrew letter has three different values. It has a phonic sound, a numeric value, and a prophetic picture. The Hebrew language is hieroglyphic. That means that the letters and numbers that are interchangeable, they actually look like a picture of something. Now, we're in the year 2022, remember, on the Gregorian calendar, but we're in the year 5782 on the Hebrew calendar. And the Hebrew calendar is God's calendar. How many of you want to get your life set with God's calendar? Come on. And not a lot of people are teaching this, but it is so powerful. Now, I showed you last week 
that 5782 is very, very powerful because when you add those numbers together, 5 plus 7 plus 8 plus 2, it literally equals 22. And we are in the year 2022. Can I say this to you? It doesn't just work for this year. It works for the entire decade. And what that tells me is this. It tells me that God's calendar and our calendar are now coming together. It tells me that our calendar and God's calendar, our agenda and God's agenda are going to collide. And we're going to sync up. And we declare thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We declare that the calendar agenda and heart of heaven is connecting to your life. It's connecting to your family. It's connecting to this house. Hallelujah. How many of you are ready to get your life in 2022 synced up with heaven? Anybody ready? And this isn't just for, for 2022, 57, 82. It's for the entire decade. This math will work out. So it tells me that this, these coming years, if Jesus tarries, as never before, we need to have our church and our hearts and our agendas synced with heaven. We're in the decade of the 80s, as I said, on the Hebrew calendar. And 80 is the letter or the number pay. And pay means mouth in Hebrew. We're in the decade of the mouth. Some of y'all have been in it for decades. Come on now. But we're in the decade of declaration. The letter even looks like the side few. If you look at it in the, in the original Hebrew, it looks like the side few. And you actually see a man with his mouth open. That's what the letter looks like. And here's the truth, y'all. We should have come into 2020, 5780, because this is the decade of declaration. That's the little prophetic picture. Remember, I told you, this is not some kind of magic formula. This is a faith formula. This is somewhere you can put your faith and believe that God will hear you and, and bless you when you speak faith and you speak his word. But understand me here. This is the decade of the declaration. This is the decade when you speak by faith. And we should have come into this year or this decade in the year 2020. We should have come into this year as, as into the roaring 20s. You know, in the 1920s, they called it the roaring 20s. And the church should have come into 2020 roaring the goodness of God. Now, I'm not trying to make a political statement. I'm painting a spiritual picture. Isn't it something that in 2020, rather than roaring, we found ourselves muzzled. We found ourselves with a mask on. Now, I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to paint any kind of political picture. I'm trying to show you something in the spirit. I'm trying to show you that what the enemy wants is a church that is quiet, a church church that is muzzled, a church that doesn't have anything to say, a church that has no faith, but I have come to let the devil know that we are not going to be that church. We are not going to be that people. Hell is banking on, betting on, hoping on a church that will be in America that will be muted, timid, quiet, afraid, and pathetic. But I declare that there is a generation that is rising up in the midst of COVID and everything else, and they will not be silent as it relates to the things of God. Every agenda of hell is going to be broken as the people of God open their mouth and begin to decree and declare the righteousness of God and the justice of the Lord throughout the nation. Somebody give God praise. Ah. So much of the church has also been lulled in the sleep because the truth is Calvary We've come back stronger than ever, and I give God praise for it. I'm so thankful for it. Our campuses, but many churches have struggled to come back because I'm going to tell you this, and I speak this a lot in circles where I have the ability to influence leaders. The attractional church wave has crested. What do you mean by that? I mean just coming to church 
and sitting there and going through the motions and having cute little services and you get out in 53 minutes and you don't really feel anything and there's no altars and no, no power, but you get in, get out and get it over with, that wave has crested. What people are looking for now is an outpouring of power. They're looking for something that can heal their body, shake their soul, restore their marriage and put their world back together again. So I just want to give you a little commercial. If you came to church looking for a cute little service that's going to get you in and get you out without confronting the issues that are trying to invade your life, you're in the wrong church on the wrong Sunday, tuned into the wrong pastor online because we believe that there is a generation that's about to rise up with fire in their belly and faith in their mouth that's going to bind the enemy and we're going to see the supernatural hand of God. We don't want a tractional church. We want supernatural church. Oh, give God a mighty praise if that's what you desire. So, so we're, we're not going to be asleep because in 2022, the true church will not be snoring. We will be roaring. <laughs> Y'all ought to tweet that. I said the real church is not going to be snoring. We're going to be roaring. Anybody ready to roar the goodness of God? Silencing this time is not an option. That's why I'm telling you, man, I, I, I am going to speak to every issue. I'm going to deal with things as greatly as I can from the perspective of the word because silence is not an option. The Bible said in Esther 4.14, if you persist in staying silent at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else. God said, if I can't use you, I'm going to use somebody. You know, I actually believed that I wasn't God's first choice. Oh, that's, that's too much for some of y'all. I believe that God had the agenda for others, but so many people had opportunities and they said no. But I stepped up when I got my chance. I said, let's go. Come on, I'm ready to, I'm ready to swing hard. The truth is, y'all, the Bible says here, help and deliverance will arise from someplace else. How many of you can say, God, you don't have to go someplace else. Let it arise right here in Orman. Let it arise at Palm Coast. Let it arise at NSB. See, see, it says here, but you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you have been made queen for such a time as this. One translation says, maybe you come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Can I say this by faith? This will not be the church's weak moment. This will not be our quiet time. This will not be the time when the church loses influence. But this will be the decade that the church of Jesus Christ will rise up with hope and healing. How many of you want that in your own world? Do you want that in your own life? Now, so when we look at, at the, the, word, the word pay, pay means mouth, but it's pay bet. Bet is the number two in the Hebrew. And the meaning of the word bet in the Hebrew is house. So if you look at the Hebrew letter bet or the, le or the number bet, Remember, they're interchangeable. It looks like the house. It looks like a house. So what I'm saying is this. When you add the speaking and the house together, it tells me that this is the year of the speaking house. As never before, I'm telling you, the house of God is going to speak. We're going to decree. We're going to declare. We're going to declare healing. We're going to declare your children are saved. We're going to declare your body is broke through. We're going to declare your marriage is restored. We're going to be a speaking house. How many of you want to be a part of a speaking house? No, I can't hardly hear from you. I said, how many of y'all want to be a part of a speaking house? Y'all know what? The world speaks. The news speaks. Facebook speaks, the devil speaks, politicians speak, everybody's talking, but the enemy wants the church to be quiet. Everybody has their opinion, but I want to tell you something. In 2022, truth must be spoken from the house of the Lord. Y'all bear with me. I'm just going to stay here a second. The church must not be silent on issues of righteousness nor justice. Don't come. How many of you can say, preacher, don't come and kill me with a lie. Awaken and empower me with the truth. 
God will raise up leaders who will speak from his house. Church is not the place where you come just to have your opinions gratified and agreed with. We don't need more opinions. America needs revival. America needs truth. And wise people know it's not always about being agreed with. Sometimes you have to say, Lord, if you're going to change me, change me in this moment. I'm telling you, you say, well, Pastor Rayleigh, what's your opinion on racism? What's your opinion on life? and the preciousness of it in the womb. What's your opinion on the sanctity of marriage and justice and widows and orphans? I'll tell you what my opinion is. My opinion is the B-I-B-L-E. Come on now, I believe that this is the declaration of uh, the, the decade of declaration, and it is time for the church of the living God to stand up firm with our convictions on the word of the Lord. So many preachers now have gotten silent and quiet and fearful and afraid, but I've come to tell you that I feel bold today. I feel like something is about to be unlocked in the spirit realm. I feel like all the mess that we have been through is going to be the catalyst that births revival in our nation like we have never seen. This will be a speaking house. But here's the truth. It may not always be what you want. You may not always hear what you want to hear, but we've got to speak. And you, if this is going to be a speaking house, the building isn't speaking. The property isn't speaking. The people are speaking. So you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. One translation said you are the house of the Lord. So you need to get full of faith over your own life and in your own life. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 20, from the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. And the harvest of their lips is what satisfies them. From the fruit of their mouth, a purpose, a person's stomach is filled. That means sooner or later, you will eat what you say. I've watched people who walk around cursing their future. They walk around cursing their family. They walk around full of doubt, fear, and negativity when all the while they don't know that miracle power is in their mouth. I know this is too much for y'all super religious people, but the Bible said you will decree a thing and it will be established. The Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. See, your life follows your words. There's a miracle in your mouth. You have victory or defeat in your mouth. You have creative and destructive power in your mouth. When you begin to speak faith, when you begin to look at the devil square in the eye and he tells you that your family will not break through. You say, devil, you are a liar. I declare that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on. There's a miracle in your mouth. When the devil tells you he's going to overcome you, defeat you, destroy you, and delay you, sabotage your purpose and assassinate your assignment, he's going to attack you at another level. He's going to attack your children, their family at another level. You need to say, devil, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, and no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. When sickness hits your body, you need to rise up and don't say, don't agree with a doctor's report that says, well, I only in four months the devil is a liar with his stripes I am healed come on when the devil tries to defeat you with depression you need to say devil I will not be depressed discouraged weepy or crying but the joy of the Lord is my strength there's a miracle in your mouth tell your neighbor say there's a miracle in your mouth The Bible said, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what was seen was not made out of things that are visible. God took nothing and made everything. Come on, somebody. In fact, the word Elohim is just real simple understanding that's the first name we see translated for God in the Bible in the Hebrew it literally means the God who makes something out of nothing 
Woo, that's good stuff right there. God can, he said, I, everything that you see, the universe and all that's in it, he said, I made it out of nothing. He said, I spoke it and it came into being. I spoke it and it was. I spoke it and the universe was brought into order. And it makes me know that we are made in the image and likeness of God. So a speaking God is going to make a speaking man. Come on. The Bible says that, that we are made in his image. And so the Bible tells tells us that in Romans 4, 17, that we should call those things that be not as though they were or though they are. That's what God did. He called those things that be not as though they were. Now, if you look at the word call in the Greek, it literally means this, to invite and receive. Hallelujah. That means you're inviting and receiving breakthrough, healing, signs, wonders, Come on, somebody. You got a call. You say, I'm inviting you, Lord. Save my son. I'm inviting you to deliver my daughter. I'm inviting you to open that door. I'm inviting you to free me from the drama. I'm calling it and receiving it. I'm declaring that 2022 will not be a year of heartache for me, but 2022 will be a year of joy, peace, power, and breakthrough. 2022 will be a year of revival in Palm Coast, awakening in New Smyrna and an outpour in Mormon Beach. Come on. So just invite it in. How many of you ready to invite victory in? Somebody say, come on in, victory. Somebody say, come on in, joy. Oh, let me make you really mad. Somebody say, come on in, money. <laughs> yeah, everything I need, you shall supply it. I dare you to give God a praise right now. If you're ready to invite it and receive it. And remember, God made everything that is out of nothing that was. He didn't start with anything. You say, well, Pastor Riley, I don't have what I need. I ain't got nothing. Well, if you don't have nothing but you got God, you got everything that you need. Just, just tell somebody on your road, just, just preach to your road and say this year, holler at him, say this year, get ready to be surprised at what God does in my life. Hallelujah. Say, 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 tell that same neighbor, say, even if it looks like I don't have enough, tell him. Tell him, hey, he's more than enough. Somebody give God a praise right now. So here's what I want you to do, precious. I want you to get your declaration. I want you to make sure that it's in alignment with your assignment. You hear me? Somebody say that. Say, my declaration will be in alignment with my assignment. Yes and hallelujah. So in 2022, close your doubt spout. You know anybody with a doubt spout? If they open their mouth, it is negative. If they open their mouth, it's full of doubt. So close your doubt spout and just say to somebody, say, open your miracle mouth. Are you ready to open your miracle mouth? Somebody give God a mighty praise if you are. <laughs> Fill your house and everyone attached to it with faith and faith-filled declarations. Speak faith over your daughter. Speak faith over your son. Speak faith over your children. Speak faith over your future. Speak faith. Don't be entrapped by the words of your mouth. Speak hope about our nation. Speak peace over our churches. Speak let your mouth be full of faith and fill your house with words of faith. Fill your husband up with words of faith. Fill your wife up with words of faith because a faith-filled confession is something that the devil cannot stop. Now, remember, we're in, we're in the season of praying, fasting, and giving because I've taught you that the Bible says that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken. So we put these three together, praying, fasting, and giving. Next Sunday is Sacred Sunday. So we're going to get our lives in order, getting our conversation is in order. The Bible said in Matthew 6, but seek first, somebody say first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Now, 
Seek is a word of worship. So in Jesus' name, every campus, we're going to another level in worship. Hallelujah. But, but watch this. The word first means foundation. And foundation is what everything else is built on. So my pursuit first is the kingdom of God. This is why at the beginning of the year, I always lead you to pray and fast and give. It is the most amazing time of our year. Our church gets so focused and pointed, not only for their own personal lives, but for the work of the Lord that he has called us to do collectively. So God says here in his word, Jesus declared, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We live in a generation that wants to get all these things and then try to fit God in. But God said it doesn't work that way. You got to flip the script. And he said, if you'll seek me first, everything else will come into order. See, God can only be first. He's preeminent, y'all. He's always been. He always will be. Nothing was before him. Nothing was created that he did not make. He's always been. He's preeminent. What, and I want to tell you, he's got to be first. And I'm declaring that in the mighty name of Jesus that he will be first in my life. God said, I won't be number two, three, four, or five. I'm not going to fit somewhere on your list. He said, I'm first or nothing. You got to put me first. He said, but if you will put me first, everything else shall be added unto you. I want to hear from the people who are putting the Lord first this year. Can, can you give a radical praise? Are there any radical people? So, so God, God is like first in my life. The very first thing that I'm going to do this year. I'm fasting, I'm praying, and I'm giving to him first. Now, hear me. When, when, next Sunday is Sacred Sunday. And we're going to be putting God in his proper perspective, his right place. Now, he's not Santa Claus. He's not your sugar daddy. Come on, somebody. He's got to be God, and he's got to be first. And when we put God first, remember, we're, we're, we're doing this together. Last year, we raised about $400,000 on Sacred Sunday. A little bit later on, about a month later, we gave every dime of it away. We gave it to the Dream Center. We gave it to Teen Challenge. We gave it to families who lost their homes. We gave every dime of it away, and people gave me the side eye and said, you've lost your mind giving that money away here uh, around COVID and all the drama that's been going on. But let me tell you, we have never had a financial year at Calvary like we've had this year. I'm trying to tell you, if you put God first, everything else is added unto you. Come on, we've built churches this year. we started campuses this year. Oh, glory to God. See, and I'm challenging you. Dawn and I are going to give our most sacrificial seed next week. We do it every single year. When you put God first, uh, some people give their first week. Some give their first month. Some give their first day. Everybody can give. It's not your tithe now. It's your first fruits. When you tithe, you're giving on what God has already done. But when you bring your first fruits, you're saying, Lord, I'm giving my faith in advance. And when you give first, in advance, you are anticipating a greater harvest that is to come. It's a divine principle, this first fruits principle, all the way back in the Old Testament. And when you implement a divine principle, you reap a divine reward. Here's what your giving does. You're giving signals to your harvest that God is involved in your life. It tells your harvest that the harvest has got to come. Some of y'all, if y'all would learn to put God first, you could, <laughs> better be careful. You wouldn't need that prescription that you take so often to give you peace. You wouldn't have to eat ice cream every night to feel better. Come on, somebody. When we bring God our first fruits, we're implementing an ageless, timeless, divine principle. It's the Shavuot festival. It's the festival of the first fruits. Now, listen, there were seven different crops that they brought for their first fruits. There were two that was already in the barn, but there were five that were still green that they had not collected. The first that was in the barn was the wheat and the barley. And the five crops that had not fully matured were the olive, pomegranate, date, grape, and fig. 
fig. Now these five fruits, they brought them unripened and they brought an offering to the Lord and said, we've not got it in the barn yet, but we're going to give it to you by faith. But the wheat and barley they had already gotten and they brought that wheat and barley before the Lord. And what the priest would do, he would take the wheat and the barley loaf and he would wave it in the presence of God. He would wave it in the tabernacle and he would wave it before the Lord and he would wave with the one hand the wheat loaf and he would acknowledge, Lord, this represents what you've already done. This represents how far you've already brought us. This represents the provision that you have been in my life. So he would wave that hand and say, this represents what you've done. But then as he waved the other hand, this would represent, God, this is what you're able to do. This this is what you're able to bring to my life in the next season. So when he waved those loaves before the Lord, he was saying, this is what you've done. This is what you're able to do. I dare somebody right now to get a little bit radical with me. Raise up both hands and say, God, this is what you've done. This is what you're able to do. Why don't you take a 10 second praise right now and give God praise for what he's already done. Y'all don't make me come down there. I need somebody who can look at the faithfulness of God. Give him a praise for what he's already done. Y'all, I got to stay on my notes, but I tell you what, if God didn't do another thing for me, if he didn't give me one more blessing, what he has done in my life has been so prolific that I will live the rest of my days giving him praise. Come on, Palm Coast. Come on, NSB. Let's have a collection of praise right now. God, thank you for what you've already done. I'm blessed because I know many of your stories. I know how far God has brought you. So, so remember, this loaf says, this is what you've already done. But this loaf right here says, this is what's coming. This is what you're able to do. I dare somebody right now who believes that God is going to do some great things and you know that he's able and you feel like 2022. God, I'm going to praise you because this is what you're able to do. Y'all, I, I, I need to... I need, to, I need to finish, but I need somebody right now. If you believe God's going to do some things for you in 2022, come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're able to do. Thank you that you've done it before. And if you've done it before, you can do it again. One, two, three. Give God a praise. Come on, speak in house. Speak that praise. So remember, whoo. I love y'all. Y'all are so radical. I know Palm Coast is coming undone right now. I know, I know NSB is having church. Somebody's watching online or just walking around the house giving God praise. But here's, here's the truth. I told you that this is a declaring house. We're going to be a speaking house, 82, remember? The pay is the mouth, the two is the house. So this is going to be a speaking house. So I don't want you to be tied up by your words. I want you to be untied. So we're going to make a declaration. I've said it before, Job 22:28. Your decree a thing, declare a thing, and it will be accomplished and established. So let's get a little bit radical. Raise up your hands if, if, you, if you want to. If you don't want to, that's okay. But I want you to say this after me. And we're going to declare this. Say, I declare, I declare. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, that you are the source of my every blessing. And you have not run out of blessings. And you are not through blessing me. If you believe God has not run out of blessings. Yo, I don't know. I feel a crazy breakthrough faith in this room. I feel a healing, delivering, oh, season shifting faith in this room. 
Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I got a word for you. Thank God is not through blessing you. If you receive it, give him a mighty praise. All right. So let me move quickly now. I'm gonna I'm gonna deposit this last little bit in your spirit. Now remember, this is the Smitty year. It's a year of rest. That means we're not going to be stressed out. We're releasing it. Remember, how many of you are going to release some stuff this year? We're relaxing in the Lord, knowing God's got it under control. But then, precious, every one of these crops means something powerful. Wheat and barley represent something in the Bible. Wheat and barley represent love and charity and fellowship and peace. It literally represents peace and love and generosity. So I declare that as you give your first fruits, that this will be a year of charity, love, fellowship, and peace. But what it represents really in, even, in an even greater way, you break bread at home. So it represents peace in your home. I wonder, is there anybody here that can declare, I'm having peace this year in my home? Okay, I got, I got a few of you. I said, how many of you are ready to declare that this will be a year of peace in your home? Peace with your family. So we're going to declare it. Come on, raise up your hands if you want to and say it after me. Say, this year, we claim a year of peace, fellowship, love, and generosity. If you receive that, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Now. One of the things that I love to do is take people to Israel. I've taken so many people to Israel through the years, and I'm believing that we're going to be able to organize another trip. How many of y'all would like to go to Israel with me? It is, it is the most life transformational trip that you could ever imagine. And in Israel, one of the things that the miracle that happened there is the desert bloomed. And one of the main crops in the desert now, the Bible said the desert would bloom and it did. God fulfilled that promise. But one of their main crops are dates. And even when the Jews talk about uh, the land flowing with milk and honey, they're actually thinking about date honey. If you've ever had date honey, if you've been with me in Israel, it is the most amazing thing. But dates in the Bible represent sweetness. And I'm telling you, some of you have been perpetually living in sour seasons. But I decree and declare that the next season for Jim Rayleigh is not going to be a sour season. I'm not going to walk around with my face all drawn up, aggravated, agitated with my honey tight. Come on, somebody. Y'all don't make me talk to you. You ever had your just, your just tight like that? The preacher says something you don't like, you just draw right up. Come on. I'm not going in this next season sour, but I'm going into this next season sweet. Who's ready to have a sweet year? Okay, I need to hear from everybody. Palm Coast, y'all ready? NSB, Orman. If you're ready for a year of sweetness, just give the Lord a praise. You're tired of the bitter. You're tired of that. You're tired of a season that's just left a bad taste in your mouth. Now, now, little, now I want you to say this after me because we're going to decree a thing and we're going to establish it. So slip up your hands and say this after me. Say this year, as we bring our first fruits, say this. Say we declare that this will be a year of sweetness. Who's in? Anybody in? I said, who's in? Sweetness with my family. Sweetness with my friends. Sweetness with my church. It's just going to be sweet. I'm just going to be so sweet this year, Don. You better get ready. You just thought I was sweet last year. I'm even sweeter this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, the fourth ingredient is the pomegranate. And in the Bible, pomegranates represent righteousness in Jewish culture. So God gave Moses instructions. He said, even when you... When you uh, uh, put the priest robes together, put embroidered pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet at the bottom of his robe, and they represented righteousness. And I declare that this is going to be a year of righteousness. I declare that all of this that has come against our nation, come against our city, come against our children, I am speaking righteousness over the land. How many of you are ready for a year of righteousness? Make a little noise if that's you. 
So, so raise up your hands and declare this after me. Say, as we bring our first fruits of faith this year, we claim a year of manifesting his righteousness to a hurting world. If you're ready to manifest love, joy, peace, and forgiveness, come on, give God a praise. Fifth ingredient are grapes. Grapes were made into wine, and wine in the Bible represents joy. So this year, I'm not going to be depressed, not going to be discouraged. I'm going to be full of joy. Tell your neighbor, you're going to like me this year. Yeah, yeah, just point out and say, you're going to like me so much this year. You're going to like me better. I'm telling more jokes this year. I'm laughing this year. Ha, 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 I'm practicing right now. I am just going to laugh. I have spent enough time crying. Some of y'all have been crying over things for decades, but this is your year to get unparalleled and unprecedented joy in your life. Some of y'all have been waiting for the next shoe to drop, the next problem to come, the next disaster to hit, but I feel like we are pushing that out, and the joy of the Lord is invading the house of the Lord. Are you ready for a year of joy? I want all the people that want joy in here. Give God a praise right now. This is joy. This is joy. You're going to want to hang out with me this year. Because I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to be full of joy. 2020 was so much drama, wasn't it? So much drama in 2021. Not 2022. So, so I want you to just say something real simple. We're going to make this declaration. You ready? Okay, here we go. Say it like you mean it because I believe you're establishing your year. Say this year, this year will, be, will be, shall be, a year of joy. Hey now. Hey now. I said hey now. I said hey now. <laughs> All right, then, then there's figs. Figs in the Bible, these were the crops that weren't yet fully matured. They brought them, and figs represent safety and prosperity in the Bible. So how many of you believe God's going to take care of you this year? Cake palm kush, y'all believe it? You believe it in NSB? Y'all believe it here in Ormond? And, and then it represents prosperity. The Bible said in 1 Kings that each man lived in safety under his own fig tree. I declare over your life this year that there is a spiritual fig tree, and you're going to find yourself safe underneath that tree. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're going to come right underneath that fig tree, and God's going to take care of you. Somebody give God praise for taking care of you this year. He's going to... Okay, let me ask you something. Did he take care of you last year? Did he take care of you in 2020? Give him praise that he's taking care of you this year. He's going to take, take care of you. But I also... I, Figs represent their symbolism of fatty uh, prosperity. Now, listen, I don't preach with any agendas. You guys know me. Anything that I ask you to do, I'm leading the way. But I also believe that God is a provider, and I believe in prosperity. I believe that the Lord is a way maker, and I believe he provides for his church. If you believe God is a provider, give him praise right now. Okay, if he's provided everything for you, come on, Palm Coast, NSB, give him praise right now. So it's a year of fatty prosperity. So what is fat? Fat, fat is the extra. It's more than what you need. None of y'all have any. Pray for your brother up here. But I've been on a diet for three months. And, oh, Jesus, I'm ready for a chicken wing and a pizza party. Come on. But, but the truth is that I believe that this year, uh, God is not going to be just enough. He's going to be more than enough. This is going to be a fatty year. Pastor Rayleigh, haven't you noticed the economy? How aren't you watching? I don't, I'm not worried about the economy because I'm a part of a kingdom. Hallelujah. Not a system. So even if the world's jacked up, my God shall supply all my needs. So if you believe it's going to be a great year of provision, raise up your hands and say this after me. Say, as we bring our first fruits offering to the Lord, say, I believe this year to be the year God opens doors 
of blessings and safety in my life. Somebody give God praise for doors of blessings and safety. Blessings and safety. As a spiritual father of this house who loves you, I declare over your family that this, come on now, will be a year of blessings and safety. Hallelujah. But I declare, you know, I went through this time in my life where I, I was son, then I got old enough to be brother, and now I'm old enough to be father. So y'all don't try to get me into being a great grandfather yet. I'm, but I believe it matters what's over you. Because what's over you rains down on you. So as someone who is an under shepherd from heaven for your life in humility, I say that this is a year of blessing and safety. Do you receive it, Palm Coast? Now the last one, and I'm getting ready to close, and what does that mean? Don't mean nothing. It's the olive, and the olive represents oil, and oil represents anointing. David said in Psalms 92.10, I, I will be anointed with fresh oil. Now, here's what's beautiful. You know, I grew up in that old church uh, where we had the communion table up front. Y'all remember that? And there was, a, uh, there, was a, <laughs> there was a flower on the communion table every Sunday. Y'all remember that flower? Some of y'all ain't 12. You know what I'm talking about. You had to have that flower sitting right there. And it was, it was a day. You had to constantly have you some flowers made. And if there was a funeral, there were flowers everywhere. And I would tell my dad, don't put the flowers out. You're going to tell everybody somebody just died. But on, on that communion stand, there was a bottle of olive oil. And it had been there since shortly before the crust of the earth had cooled. Come on, somebody. It had been there forever. And if you ever smelt it, it smelt so nasty. It didn't just smell nasty. It smelt, smelt nasty. Come on, somebody. It was horrible. Because they, and you got anointed with that oil. Stanky olive oil. It stinks so bad. And you know what? I, I, my wife cooks with olive oil all the time. Our olive oil don't stink. It smells good. I love good olive oil. But I found something out about olive oil. If you don't use it, it goes rancid. If you don't use the oil, the oil goes bad. David said here, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Some of you have been trying to fight today's battle using yesterday's oil. But I declare that 2022 over your life will be a year of fresh oil and new anointing. So raise up your hands and say this after me. Say in Jesus' name, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Come on, yokes will be destroyed. Burdens will be lifted because of the anointing. So listen, Palm Coast, NSB, live stream, all you beautiful people here. Did you get anything out of the word? I'm not quite done yet, but I just want to say this to you. And I want you to raise your hands and I want you to say it after me. Say, we will walk through double doors of anointing full of praise in 2022. Are you ready to do that, precious? So everybody just stay tight for a moment. I'm going to land this plane. You and Palm Coast and you and NSB, listen very closely. Many years ago, the Lord gave me this strategy of first fruits. He, he literally just birthed it in my spirit. I'd never heard any of this talk before. I'd never seen anybody share it to this level, teaching on the fruits. 
and teaching on the symbolisms, and I'll teach a little bit more, and we'll pray next week. But for me, it was about offering myself to the Lord. Next Sunday's my birthday, and isn't that good? <laughs> I'm, I'm excited because I get to break the fast, John, on my birthday. <laughs> Won't he do it? As I've gotten older every year now, I want the Lord to have more of me. I want him to have all of me. So first fruits for me, for Pastor Don, when we sow, we don't sow to impress anybody or we don't sow to let anybody know what we're doing. We sow because we want God in his rightful place. And we give our most sacrificial seed. I've got some things I'm trusting God to take care of this year. Wave at me if that's you. So next Sunday on Sacred Sunday, when we bring our first fruits, first day, first week, some people give first month, some people give so radically into this. When we give that offering, it's a powerful thing. Next Sunday morning, here's what we're going to do. We're going to offer our churches to the Lord. Every single solitary campus, it belongs to Jesus. And you know what? The next Sunday when we offer our churches to the Lord, we're going to offer our first fruits to the Lord. And we're going to say, God, I want you to be first. I don't want you to be somewhere on my list. Everything I have, only have it because of you. So God, I'm going to offer my first fruits to you. I'm giving it to you. But the most important thing is what I just talked about. We're going to offer ourselves to the Lord. How many of you can say this year, Lord, I want you to use me. I offer, I offer up myself to you. I offer up myself to you. Somebody just raise your hands and just offer up yourself to him right now. God, have your way in my life. Hallelujah. I give myself away. In 2022, I give myself away. So can you use me? I give myself Come on, Palm Coast. I give myself away. Oh, yes, I do. seated just for one moment and then we're going to sing this together but we're going to come to you now and allow you to give your tithe to the Lord Pastor Don and I are going to sow today remember tithe is different than first fruits tithe is based on what God has already given you how many of you could say God's already blessed me pastor so so today is a day to tithe you and Palm Coast and a new Smyrna, we're going to turn it to your pastors now, your campus pastors, and they're going to help you in this moment. But I want everybody to get your tithe and your offerings before the Lord. Remember, our first fruits is next week, and that's based on what God is going to do in faith. So I want you to right now to take your tithe and hold it before the Lord. Take your gifts. You can give online at calvaryfl.com. You who want to give, uh, uh, if you're watching on, by live stream or you want to give online here, it's calvaryfl.com backslash give. You can text any amount at 386-866-3060 or you can fill out the envelope and give. Any way you give, I believe that God will bless you. But I want you to get your life in sync with the word of the Lord. How many of you believe that God is a blesser? Anybody believe that? 
I want you to get your offerings and hold them before the Lord right now. If you give it on your phones or online, hold up your hands or your phone and let me pray over you right now. Father, I pray for people as they give across the room. I pray in Jesus' name that you will bless them as they give online or at every campus. Lord, we're honored to bring a portion of what you have blessed us with back to you, knowing that you rebuke the devourer on our behalf. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let's give to God. Here's what I want you to do now. I want you to pray this week. Let's receive. I want you to pray this week and ask the Lord, Lord, what kind of faith do you want me to move in for the Sacred Sunday offering? It's going to be powerful. I'm going to have the whole tabernacle built up here. I'm going to teach and we're going to pray. Pastor Dawn's going to help me. But then we're going to do just what that priest did. We're going to take your first fruits and we're going to wave it before the Lord. And we're going to show God that he's first. Who's ready to show the Lord? Lord, you're number one. Amen. So remember now, precious, what we're offering to the Lord is ourselves. Anybody want to offer yourself to Jesus? Everybody stand and sing it with me now. Sing, I give myself away. I give myself away. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, I do. I give myself away. ourselves to the Lord. How many of you want God to have all of you this year? All right. Nobody leave for just a moment. I'm going to release you, but this is the most important time of the service with heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm one of those guys that believes that Jesus still saves. What people need is an opportunity to have their lives changed. If you're here in this room and you'd say, Pastor Jim, there's some things in my life that ought not be there. There are some things that alienate me and separate me from God. So when you pray, Pastor, pray for me. I need to make sure that in 2022, anything that has kept me from him is under the blood. Some of you have been dealing with so much stress, so much pressure, so many problems. This is your year to get past all that. But some of you have been wrestling with things that have held your life. And you need to put it under the blood. Sin, compromise, anything like that. If you're here today or you're online, you say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. When you pray for somebody, pray for me. If you're not where you need to be with the Lord, when I count to three, raise your hand. Are you ready? Pray for me, Pastor. One, I got some things I need to get under the blood today, Pastor. Two, if you're going to pray, pray for me, Pastor. Three, slip up your hand right now. Raise it across the room. Pray for me, Pastor. Hands in every section. Come on, hold it right up. Hold it right up. If you're ready for a new season and a brand new beginning, hold that hand up. Look at the Lord, man. On this rainy Sunday, God's dealing with people's hearts. I'm going to lend you five more seconds. If you need to raise your hand, raise it right now. Five, four, pray for me, Pastor. Three, two, one, zero. If you raised your hand up, just hold it up and keep it up for a minute. Hands across the room. If somebody next to you has their hand up, I want you to move back because I want to invite them forward to pray. I want you to make it easy for them to come. And if they are a little afraid to come by themselves, you come with them. But if you're ready for a new beginning in the last two minutes of this service, come this way right now. Come on, I promise you won't come by yourself. 
come from across the room right now. Look at them coming already. Come on, come on. Y'all better, y'all better give God praise. Come on, sisters. Y'all come right up here. Come on up here, pretty girls. Y'all come right up here, daughters. Y'all come on. Come on up here, sisters. Oh, I wish I would clap because people are going to come. Oh, look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. Look. People saying yes to Jesus. Oh, come on. Yeah, we'll wait for you. Come on. Come on. All the way from the back. Yeah, come on. Come on up. Yes, beautiful. Give them a good God bless you as they come. Y'all, on a rainy Sunday morning, look at all these people surrendering their lives to Jesus. Never gets old to me. Hands on your heart. I've got an altar team right here that will pray with you in a moment. But everybody pray this prayer after me loud and strong. Pray, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, please forgive me for all my sins. Take my heart. Wash me clean. Make me new. I declare that 2022 is my year to walk with you, to know you, to serve you. I give myself to you, and I thank you for new beginnings. All you altar workers, just go to these right now and pray with them. Everybody else, slip up your hands and let me pray over you. Are you glad you came to church today? I'm, listen, you bless my heart. If you gave your heart to Jesus, just type in saved in the comment column. Don't forget now, tomorrow's MLK Day, so we won't be opening our offices, but we will be praying. Join me for prayer. Don't miss this next Sunday. It's going to be the greatest Sunday ever. I'm going to bless you. You ready? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. I speak the blessing in favor of the Lord over your life. I declare that this week every attack of the enemy will be broken and the peace and power and victory of the Lord will come on your house, your children, and your children's children. I decree and declare that peace will be your portion this week. And I declare that this will be a week not of drama, but a week of rest. If you receive it, give God a praise. Now, if you're my special guest, Come back to the coffee shop. I want to shake your hand. God bless you. I love you, everybody. Thanks for watching the message. I'm sure this spoke to you. Here's what I want you to do. Why don't you subscribe to this YouTube channel? That way, every time there's a new message, you'll get to hear it. Also, many of you have watched this. Some of you watch on a regular basis. Why not take time? And so, you can give at calvaryfl.com. You can give on your phones, and you can be a part of helping us take this message around the world, the message of hope, the message of Jesus Christ. Can't wait to see you back here real soon.